So these are the famous H blocks at Puma Punku. And contrary to popular belief, they are not the same size. Also notice the sharp corners, and yet this one appears to be unfinished. And the interior of the H-blocks are dovetails, they're not 90 degrees. Mm. Here's the question, are we able to, with our technology today, to recreate these? You could, but it would be very expensive. Okay. And this is as flat as you can get. This, this one's not finished. Yeah. A, because it's rough, and B, because the two symbols have not been put in. So the difference between the distance here and there going all the way down, has been measured to be accurate with we, uh, within one ten thousandth of an inch. Look at that. Wow. I can fight all that. Too. And this shows the fact that uh, a lot of the stone was buried by a wall of mud and much of it is still underground. No, in the uh, bag. Sorry. This one's different. That is Lake Titicaca in the distance. And this is an artificial construction. Are these the green stones you're talking about? Yeah. So if if the lake level was a hundred feet higher, which it was ten thousand years ago, then it would at least be lapping at the shore, or the shoreline would be right here. And that's what where the main staircase is. Gone? This one is clearly not in its original position. Oh, you can still see the residue of the bronze. The green. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But Hugh, your opinion, would you think that this would be simply a drainage channel for rain? 
looks like something else really doesn't it I mean, yeah because you've got why would they put metal clamps between each of the rocks yeah it just seems like some energetic purpose here it's beyond just just sort of practical reasons I think there's multiple kind of reasons here and then if it was coming from the lake they'd have to pump it up and then put it through i mean so it could be for metal ore sort of cleaning it could be to do with electric charge uh -huh. which is what um, John Burke suggests in his book Seed of Knowledge Stand of Plenty that the whole, they would continually move water around within the pyramid to create electric charge ah. and that would have an energetic effect but also a practical effect uh -huh. where it could actually help with the metal ore processing so um, there's lots of lots of ideas I'm just gutted they've covered this up because I'd love to see some of the original metal so why would you make a mortar free wall like this and have each stone different in terms of length. Think of a acoustical chamber. All right. Whoa. Kapana, the semi-subterranean temple, which is the darker section there, and Pumapunku are aligned at four degrees off the equinox. So, which means that these three, if the logic would uh, assume, uh, be correct, those temples were aligned to a, t a time when the earth was facing the equinox four degrees to where it is today. And it raises a huge question yeah. because if Poznanski was correct, and I believe he was, mm -hmm. that all the stones in this, that make up this quadrangle were correct, and the sun gate, when it was placed here, it's here today, but originally it was here on a lava mound, it's from there that you can get a complete bearing of the stones at the head, and it gives you a background, um, uh, it gives you a perfect alignment on the horizon to 15,000 BC. So, ergo, if these temples are now aligned at the equinox as it is today, at 15,000 BC, that mound, that temple, the Subterranean Temple and the Pumapunku must come before that. Mm -hmm. I'm just putting that out there mm -hmm. because